All right, time to go on to our next chapter of the virtual ticket, ticket pricing, and how to find the best perfect price. It does exist. A perfect price exists. If we think about economics, it's called the equilibrium price, where it's demand and supply meet, and you maximize your profits to the maximum. So let's take a look at how you can do that. Such an important topic because I have to tell you, modern consumers, they want to pay for this. We all enjoy paying for things, as funny as that might sound, because it's a commitment. And that's how we commit ourselves to getting the value that we've paid for in a way. So don't be afraid to charge for your events and let's find that perfect price for you. So basic economics tells us that the product price, a perfect product price does exist. And this perfect price is found in the equilibrium. So uh, basically when demand and supply meet perfectly, that is called the equilibrium. Now this chart here is showing a space where demand is actually changing as demand goes up. As long as your supply goes up to meet it, you have increased profits. So P1 is uh, that smaller square and then P2 is a bigger square, right? And the square is your profits. That is the amount of money that you're making, right? That is your price times your quantity. And we want the price and quantity to both be as large as possible. But if your price is too high, people will buy less. If your price is too low, you aren't maximizing your, 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 um, your, your profits because you could have maybe charged more. So let's look at some examples here. And uh, the first example we're going to look at is the in-person pricing. And it looks like really quickly, I just got to, why is that up there like that? I think I just need to make this just a little bigger. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. So um, we're going to look at the ticket price for in-person here. And there's three different prices. Oh, it's not showing up right there. Sorry. We're going to have to show it this way. Why is it not showing up right? Apologize. There we go. We'll make it a little bigger. Um, all right. I'll just read this from the book. Sorry, guys. It, it, it's it's on the, uh, the right-hand side over here. And we'll look at the three prices for virtual. Now, this is all in the book as well, but basically there is a perfect price. So the in-person price of $100 and selling a quantity of 100 will generate you $10,000. But the in-person price with the price of 50 and the increased quantity of people who will buy at that price, 500, makes you $25,000 dollars, right? So you're making $15,000 more with a lower price because more people are willing to buy. It's basic economics, right? Now on the other side here, we have three virtual options. And the first virtual option is at $10, we have a thousand people who purchase. At $5, we have 5,000 people who purchase. And at $1, we have 10,000 people who purchase. Yet the $5 price receives the most money because you know, even if we had 10,000 people, they're only paying $1 each. It's better to charge $5 to 5,000 people. And this is so important to understand. It just depends on the demand for and how many people there is. So the way to think about this would be to look at the change in price of a ticket versus the change in price of your virtual ticket. You kind of have to, I would say, call your customers. When you get that first customer who buys a virtual ticket or buys a ticket, call them and say, hey, you know, what was, what, tell me about your buying decision. Tell me, you know, uh, would you be willing to pay more for this experience? Just do it. Just call them out and just be like, hey, I want to ask you a few questions about attending and I'm, I'll give you a free ticket for your time, uh, whatever you have to do. But ask them, would you be willing to pay more? Or would you, would it have been easier for you to make your purchasing decision if it was $20 instead of $50? Like how much easier would it have been? How much quicker would you have made your decision? Because a lot of this is really based on the way you're presenting your experience. Because a lot of events have never charged for virtual tickets before. So they don't. there's no precedent set in the consumer's mind about how much value they're going to receive. Which is why I generally recommend having a low price the first time you do a virtual ticket. A, you might screw something up. Something might go wrong. And you're still learning how the process into you know, delivering a great um, value to your customer. So before you, you know, set a precedent, do a, do a couple free ones, right? Do some free ones so that the consumers can see how much value they're getting. Now, 
we can talk a little bit about economics and price elasticity. A product with perfect inelastic price elasticity means it doesn't matter what the price is, the demand stays the same. So something like this would be like urgent medical supplies, right? Like it doesn't matter if it's a thousand or a hundred, I'm going to buy it because I'm, I need that to live, right? But ticket sales, right? If it's too expensive, I don't need that to live. There's alternatives that I can purchase that I can get value out of. And one way to think about this too is to offer your ticket buyers multiple options and different options have different elasticity. Meaning if somebody decides to pass up on the, per, the in-person um, ticket buy, which is expensive, they might be more willing to at least buy the virtual ticket at a lower price or at least buy the on-demand ticket at a lower price. So think about that. And the goal for ticket pricing is to find that perfect price, right? It can be too high or it can be too low. So we want to find that perfect price and get in there. And just remember that even though virtual tickets have an unlimited supply, you still need to find the perfect price. To do this, consider the highest price that you can charge to the largest set of customers. How well do you know your customers? What is the biggest group of them? Maybe you've got some diehard fans that will pay a lot of money, but there's only a few of them. What is the bulk biggest group that you can charge the most amount of money? And then think about that and then start testing with the pricing. Now, there also are multiple tactics, okay, for having coupons, affiliate codes, uh, early bird specials that we talk about in the book that you can use to temporarily reduce the price without reducing the value. So the value is a $100 ticket, let's say, but the early bird is only $50. So you're keeping the value, but discounting it for specific groups of people, which again, allows you to reach larger audiences. So most tickets use a tiered ticket pricing structure, which can easily integrate a virtual ticket into that pricing strategy. So event managers often use mechanisms such as early signups, Referrals is a great one. If you can get your customers to have referral discounts and referral codes, putting in a referral platform. Referrals can be up to 20 times less expensive and more valuable than regular tickets um, that are regular like leads and purchases that um, you know can be more expensive. So remember that real-time access unfolds live at the venue. You can only sell that one time. You gotta get the live stream right. On-demand access happens after the event. So you can easily do that, but you can also live stream or you can also release a premiere. And a premiere is a recording of the event that is released live at a specific time. YouTube and Facebook offer this feature. Many premium content delivery networks are using this feature as well. So selling event tickets for most events is the main source of revenue. But whether or not you intend to charge a fee for your event, it is important to set a high value for the ticket with some price. You may also choose not to charge an entrance fee, right? You may make the live stream free and just sell sponsorships and advertising. But whatever you do, make sure to expand your reach and have a big, bright register now and buy button on your web page. So let's look at this for a second here. I know these are a little small, so uh, they're really bigger in the book. But when you're talking about paid tickets, you can have early bird specials, you can have VIP tickets, you can have group discounts, on-demand access, referral programs, and things such as that. On the discounted tickets, you can do promotions, you can have special press passes, you can have affiliates, you can have coupon codes, and you can even offer giveaways for social actions, for example. We talked a little bit about the promotional strategy in our last video, so I'll breeze over this, but essentially you can use um, coupon codes and discounts and things like that. You can get the word out with live streaming before your show, during your show, behind the scenes of your show as well. So hopefully that gave you a good idea of how to market and price your virtual tickets. Finding the perfect price is an important thing to do. It's gonna take some time, you're going to have to call your customers. You're going to have to talk with your team. You're going to have to build the virtual ticket into your overall pricing strategy, but it can be done. Our next video 
will be on preparing your live event for a video production live stream. So stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I will be happy to answer them.